little hand-wired class, build your own little keyboard. Um, really what I'll be talking about is like talking about the, the basics of the electronics in your everyday keyboard. Um, we're going to make the small one, but the, the principle just scales up, um, and I'll talk about you know, why certain things are required, and we'll just go ahead and go through it. Um, so my name is Carlos, so if you have any questions, raise your hand, say Carlos. Hi, everybody. This is, my, uh, this is actually my first time here at 801 Labs. Um, Marv's my friend, and we know each other from a local keyboard group that love keyboards. We love keyboards so much. This is like my 10th keyboard. Um, I work with Mike. He knows my funky ass keyboards that I have at work. Um, keyboards, yeah. <laughs> keyboards are, like are super customizable. It's this like rabbit hole hobby. Um, so we've got a lot of options, as you saw here. You have a bunch of switches. You have a bunch of um, layouts. So this is a small one, but um, I have a large hand wired keyboard I I finished recently up here. Um, all of this is hand wired. Except for you know the RGB LEDs because I would I would have killed myself if I <laughs> had to deal with that. Um, but they're they're you know it's it's pride and joy um, and it's it's just really fun. They're they're simple but um, I think we take them for granted because you know a keyboard's a keyboard. You can buy a twenty dollar keyboard just use that for the rest of your life or you could buy a two hundred dollar keyboard obsess over it love it like it's your baby and that's me that's that's what. That's what we're we're where we're at. I was gonna say that's cheap. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> okay, so let's review the build materials just so that everybody has everything you need. Um, so we've got these 3x3 three three printed cases. Everybody has one. You're going to need um, solid core wire. So if you didn't grab wire up here, it's just wire. Go ahead and grab some. You'll need to cut it. And uh, so we'll use pliers or wire strippers or uh, a few things here. Um, you're going to need nine mechanical keyboard switches, which... They're up here. We've got multiple styles. The black ones are linears. The green ones are an obnoxious clicky switch. Um, you'll need nine diodes. And these are, these are through-hole style diodes. Um, if you don't have them, we have a few extras up here. If you break one, they are glass. So if you break it, um, you should have one extra in the strips that I've been given out. But you know, we'll, we'll make it work. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and then lastly, you'll need the Arduino Pro Micro, which is the, the specific controller. This one is super, super popular amongst DIY uh, keyboard makers because of multiple reasons. One, it's um, the, the controller on it is really easy to program. Um, two, it has a lot of uh, I.O. switches as well as a couple digital and analog switches, or sorry, pins. Um, and so with that, you can uh, use a firmware on it. We, uh, I will you be flashing your controllers with um, a firmware called QMK. And QMK is this really great um, library. It's written in C. So if you want to modify it, you have to know a little bit of C code. Um, but it's this great firmware that already has a ton of features. Um, and so we'll be using that because I've already pre-written pre the software for this. Um, so we're just going to work on the hardware. So if anybody doesn't have any of this stuff, come grab one. Um, OK, so you've got a couple things here. Let's just start with the basics. The top thing is the controller. It's irrelevant what it looks like. Just, just put it right there in front of you. Don't touch it, OK? Um, and then grab your case. And I want you all to take the case and face it towards you. Um, face it towards you like this with the with the USB cutout on the bottom, right? And then the other half the, of the clamshell is going to go um, like this, right? So when they come together, it's going to open up like this, right? If you really want to, um, you know, break the mold, go ahead and go like this. Just where this is the orientation that we're going to be using for today, like this. Okay. So now take your, your bottom and go ahead and pop in the switches um, w so that the legs match up to this diagram right here. Right. So I'm going to take mine here. You're going to pop it in with the legs on the bottom. Right. So now looking at this, I've got my middle switch, top and bottom leg, top and bottom leg. 
So let's proceed with that. Does anybody have any questions on this procedure? <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's so freaking straightforward. Um, so yeah, if your switches don't quite fit, you know, push push a little bit harder. Um, some switches have just, you know, very slightly, they're slightly bigger, um, and they're a pain in the ass to, to push in, but you'll get it. Is the orientation with the switches, the switch legs on the bottom. So, um, with the opening for the USB on the bottom as well. Okay. <laughs> I've I didn't follow my own instructions. <laughs> to redo them. isn't super important the orientation you could have put them in reverse it's fine um, but it's just for the, the sake of consistency so we all know what what lines go where um, so oh Just about there. Okay. So again, just to reiterate, we're gonna want to go with this sort of orientation. So when it opens up like a like a clam, you've got your uh, your legs up top, right? So like this. on ahead. Oh, I'm an idiot. I forgot to animate these questions. So what's a diode for? One way check valve for electricity. Smarty pants. <laughs> Smarty pants. <laughs> you get a gold star. So it's a one way valve for electricity. It prevents current from flowing in the opposite direction. Um, now why might that be relevant for a keyboard? So if, you, if any of you are gamers, which you probably almost everybody is, um, you may have heard of a term of, uh, you may have heard of ghosting, but do, do, you, do any of you know what that actually is? Why, like how a keyboard ends up ghosting? Correctly. Yeah, so, it's something like that. <laughs> it's because they, it cannot read th things at a certain coordinate. So, um, so here we have a couple of examples. So let's say you're pressing a switch. Here you're activating line D and activating line four. So 
This is the coordinate of uh, the key that will be pressed. Sorry, this, kind of, this is a little bit backwards. This is the key you press, and these are the two lines that, you're, that are being activated. So let's move on to the next example. Let's say you're going to press two keys, and they're on the same row. So then you have two keys that activate. That's fine. It can identify them. They're the coordinate system, right? But now let's say you're going to hold down three keys, right? So you've got two keys being held down, two key, or, uh, and one additional key. One of those keys, sorry, two of those keys share a row, and two of those keys share a column. And so which of the four are going to be detected, right? You could be pressing these three or these three. It just, the, unless your firmware has some crazy way of, of detecting all of these key presses, it's not quite possible, right? So then uh, a lot of the cheaper keyboards, they don't have any of these protections. They may use like a cheap controller um, that has a ton of IO pins and uh, work around it that way so that every single connection is just a one-to-one. -one. Um, or the, we might just use diodes. Um, so again, to visualize this, we're going to press this key here. And then we're going to press another key here. And here it's safe. They're two, they don't share a row or a column. But on the next one, they do share a row and a column. So then electricity may flow in this direction. And then it may register this key and then drop that one. Or uh, it may receive both keys at the same time. And then the firmware is like, ah, I don't know what to do. And so you lose all input. Um, and so that's where ghosting happens. Um, that's how it happens. So then diodes prevent that, right? You don't have that flow. It cannot flow, but in a in one direction. Um, and so um, what I showed over here would never happen. Um, so we're just going to add diodes. That's that's the most cost effective solution because they are super super cheap. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do that now. So pull out your diodes. You want you'll want to pull them off of the paper. Um, do so gently unless you're, uh, it doesn't really matter. You're going to end up cutting most of these legs anyway. But for this technique, we are going to take your diode and you're going to bend it over and try and create a loop like in this image. So just bend it 180 degrees and then keep going to 270 degrees to create a loop like this. The loop has to be big enough to fit over the switch post, right? So one of these little switch legs. So try and keep it about one or two millimeters wide. Follow this, follow the, um, how it is here. It's the one, you want to make the yeah. one away from the stripe, away from the, the black mark. Yes. Because that's how you determine the directionality of the diode. Yeah. If you do them backwards, shame on you. I'm not desoldering your board for you. No. <laughs> You'll have to desolder it with your mouth as punishment. <laughs> so um, the easiest way is, uh, you know, a, a good process is just go ahead and do that to all nine of your diodes. And while that's happening, we can, I think, start uh, heating up your irons. So if you don't, if your iron isn't on, go ahead and turn it on. Um, while you're doing this, it'll, it'll get up to temperature. Now, by way of information, these diodes are not going to be in parallel. They're, sorry, they're not going to be in series. They're going to be in parallel. So at one point, we'll connect them. But I want to make sure that you don't do it wrong. So just make your little loops. Set your diode down. If it's helpful, you can grab some pliers, you know, so you can wrap around the, the tip of it. Um, yeah, if, if you have any. We want them straight out like that. Um, sure. You're going to eventually trim the, the, the excess from the loop. Um, but, yeah. 
I've got some that you could borrow. Yeah. You could also just make a wider loop and then hold it over the switch post or grab an extra switch, just hold it over there and then pull it. Doesn't have to be super clean. got lots of strong opinions so <laughs> <laughs> that's everybody's favorite it's the holy grail of switches they feel great and i have like 600 of them do they feel a a dollar 50 a switch great yeah yeah <laughs> and that's that's where the no. the debate no. really comes down to no. the, the yacht trash for are enough there at 55 cents a switch, great. I need to buy those. The, that's the way I'm going, except you still have to take them apart and move them. Mm -hmm. If you want loop. Yeah. That's the biggest problem is hand building switches. It's almost worth buying the Skies, because they're already disassembled, and Heroin Bob uh, throws in lube, so. Okay. Anybody having too much of a struggle? Anybody want some help or pointers? Okay. I have complete confidence in all of you. Ain't no thing. <laughs> yeah. So you want the loop to be a little, it's still open so that it goes around the switch post. So that's about a one and a half millimeter gap, maybe even two. It's okay if it's extra wide. Um, alternatively, if you wanted to make it even simpler on yourself, do a 180 degree loop that over the switch and then just crimp it with pliers. It really isn't a wrong way. It, this is just, I think, a, a much simpler technique so that you don't have to you know, worry about it um, when you're actually applying the solder. Oh, okay. I wired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wire wrapping is even before your time, man. It's how uh, they didn't use the solder things. They would just wrap wire together very tightly. Um, Oh, do you need some diodes? Yeah. yeah, I've got you, sir. Right here. There you go. So the pandas, are they That's the red one that you have on that board, right, by the way. Oh, okay. They're tactile, but quiet. Yeah. They feel good, and they take insanely long amount of time to build because you have to hand build them. You take apart two switches, you take the stem out of one and you put it in another, but while you're open, you move it. And basically you just you put a little bit of lube on all of the moving surfaces except the It's a giant pain in the ass. I don't recommend it unless, unless you've like gone down the hole as far as close I am. Unless you're a devotee. I mean, I no, my first board was just got on yellows, but and they're not my favorite. I think they're too soft. But I didn't bring any of them. I really should have brought the old apple. 
all sorts of needs that I have. Mm -hmm. The Alps, uh, uh, SJCM, mm -hmm. and cream Alps, and the Amnon Cambers, and the Apple hairpin, which is the worst switch I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> it's worse than Pro, or, um, Fox Royals. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I I played with some box rods. Yeah. Is there any Utah meetup in the works? Yes. So there, uh, the UTMK uh, Discord group is kind of based on a Reddit, so I don't Reddit. So yeah. Uh, but there's a Discord um, that if you reach out to me later, I'll invite you to um, hold on to your wallet. It's a very expensive. <laughs> yeah. The hobbies are already expensive, um, so I, I'm, I'm aware. <laughs> yeah, I own 20 keywords. That's not a joke. That's, and I built almost all of them. Yeah. Well, those numbers up, those are I've got more on the way. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, dude, those already shipped. All right. Um, does anybody need, like, a, a lot more time? Should we move on to the next step? Okay. Cool. So the next step, let's actually put these on. So ideally, follow this method to, to help um, with organizing the, where the wires are going to go. So take one of your looped wires, or uh, looped diodes, loop it over one of those switch posts, and then take the other side and bend it across. Um, not necessarily, but what you're going to end up doing is um, using the s those diode legs to create a row, right? So here we're we're creating um, a row of wires with the excess um, leg. So the loop goes right here. You're going to solder that in, and then you take the the other leg and you bend it over. So initially, when you put it in. This leg is going to be sticking up. So then you just bend it over and then make it touch the next one. Right? <laughs> so again, let me go through this animation. So you add the loop over the, s the stem, or sorry, the switch post. Bend over the leg and then do that for the next one. Loop it over the switch uh, stem, switch post, sorry. Bend over the leg, loop over the switch post, bend over leg. And you want them to be touching each other. Because this is how we're going to create our, our rows in a very um, easy way. You could you know, actually take wire and try and connect them, but this is just much, much easier. So um, it doesn't have to be. You're going you're gonna to end up soldering it. Yeah. Oh, you gave it yeah. I yep. it. So you you'll probably want to grab um, some pliers and just tighten that a little bit, but it really shouldn't matter once you actually have solder on that. I yeah. Get a, I mean, all of your diodes laid out. Yeah. Get the three diodes laid out, and then you can solder them. Correct. We don't really care what's happening with the wire on the kink side. In fact, we're going to cut those off eventually. Perfect. So once you have those lined up, so you don't really want to, it, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to solder these right after. So just line them up on the switch posts. If you want to wait to bend them, that's also fine um, because once they're soldered in, it may be just easier to then bend over the, uh, the leg. Wire. Just runs across. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. So it'll run across. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to wait, that's fine. Um, once you have them lined up, go ahead and take your soldering iron and solder that loop. Add the solder inside of there. The loop should help, um, you know, through capillary reaction. It'll fill up um, and then make a really good connection. Could you do Has one row at a time, or should you do them all? <clears throat> it's um, I do one row at a time. Yeah, one row at a time is easier. Right. Has is anybody new to soldering and would like some tips? All right. So, first thing when you solder, and the first mistake every person makes is you try and put the heat onto the solder. That's not how soldering works. What you what you should think of is soldering is flowing the the solder. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to apply the the iron to where you want the solder to flow. So you're going to heat up the actual wire, that little um, loop. So you're going to put heat there. And then you touch the solder to, to the loop. And then as that flows in, you just kind of gently push it in. It'll just fill in and be easy to go. Yeah. What I would do is you put the iron on the side of it. And then you feed the solder from the other side over here. Um, and that's the safest way of doing that. And rule one of soldering, don't touch the pointing end. Pointing end. <laughs> rule number two, know where your soldering iron is or you will fail rule number one. <laughs> rule number three, don't touch the stuff you just made hot. <laughs> There's absolutely no chance that I burn myself with my soldering iron. So you were saying you want to heat the part that you're going to solder. Yep. And then and then apply. So while you're still holding the iron to it, apply the solder. Yep. 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 There you go. So add some more. So you make a pretty solid connection. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Cool. Yeah. So the loop, the loop is really just. It might help if you can close it up a little bit more, but it's really just so that you can get a solid connection in there. <laughs> yeah. So I would actually say hold. Let's try this. So we can actually um, pull this. Right there, you go. So that's a pretty good loop, and that's. Uh, pretty tight. And so now when you apply solder in there, uh, through capillary action, it's just going to fill right in. Right? Nice. So there are pliers if you want to keep doing that. <laughs> All right. So it looks like you've got your soldered in. Go ahead and cut off the excess leg um, of the kinked side. Yeah, yeah, this is very. Oh, yeah. Sorry. All of it, or we're just using. Is there a certain amount that's needed? Um, no, you can just go ahead and cut all of it, just so it's flush. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yep. No. So go ahead and solder those in. Last time it scared me. That this time I was just whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. 
I kind of figured it was. You don't seem like the type to intentionally cause safety concerns. You take that to work and annoy everyone? Huh? You take that to work and annoy everyone? No, it'll just annoy me, honestly. <laughs> Maybe I should hook up one of the buttons to reboot. Carlos, do you use a macro pad at work? No. I do. I just brought one in because uh, my, my coworkers and I recently discovered Internet Archive Scorched Earth, if you remember playing that. So now we waste time playing that. And so just a little macro pad that has the arrow keys and then a few of the shortcuts that we need. Uh, Looks like you're good. So yep. Good. So once, once you have the loop soldered, you can go ahead and so trim <laughs> off the excess uh, diode leg. Okay. On the loop side. On the loop side. Don't trim the, Don't trim the other side. side. Remember, we don't have any desoldering. We, we don't have any solder suckers. So if you need to desolder anything, you're gonna have to do it with your mouth Actually, my, my <laughs> or, or your fingers. I did. It's not a big case. <laughs> I, I, I did bring mine. <laughs> Oh, I've got a couple here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Yes. I know, but these are easier. <laughs> And you'll just want to cut it flush up to the to the solder connection. Um, if there's excess, it's okay. Yeah, these are just much easier. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and that's why I preferred them as soon as I saw they were not. Why do we call this? Like, yep, the signal on soldering irons. Flash got them for his. Yeah, I guess it's just like, it's good. Oh, it's good. I just want to be good. No, I don't think we got all of them. No, you're probably right. There's more. That's crazy. Okay, so most of you have already got one row done, but just continue on and do it for the other rows. Are those the, the chattered ones? Yeah, these are the ones that were having a hard time cutting solder. They <laughs> <laughs> had a hard time cutting solder? Yep. <laughs> How is that even possible? They, uh, they were so... Someone cut something a lot harder yeah, than solder. Yeah, I had a pair of those. Some of these. I, uh, so yeah. they were just like a hole. <laughs> and those are the cheapest ones in Chinese Museum of 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 no, I believe you. Yeah, it's look funny. at the teeth on it. Or, well, it's not supposed to have teeth, technically. Uh, yeah, you can see. Like, there's literally just a hole <laughs> where, like, yeah. nothing happened. Yeah, it doesn't even come together. It's hilarious. I think that I keep them around. Or, <laughs> no, that, like, I don't want to ruin a good pair. Uh -huh. And I need something I really need cut. I think it's a good demonstration to see, like, this is when you know your cutters are bad. <laughs> How do you know your cutters are bad? They came free with something else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marv, don't don't bag on those. All my all my stuff is the cheapest shit you can buy. <laughs> <laughs> not everybody is not everybody is is Bill Winters. Okay. Oh shit! What is that? TS one hundred. Safety squids. Oh, that's that's a wireless yeah. soldering iron. It's not wireless. No. The power adapter is in there. Oh, okay. You can run it off a USB though. Oh wow! It's five volt. I've seen some Chinesium ones of these. Well, this one is, and it is, uh, but it's open source firmware. Oh really? Yeah. Well, why why would you need firmware? Yeah. <laughs> so you can change uh, the the ranges. Yeah, like okay. min max and mm -hmm. the other stuff over there. That's, mm. that's my travel soldering iron. That's my normal base station. Yeah. I don't care what you say, that is worth it. 
a good I iron, believe you. A I believe you. Is worth it. it can get frustrating. I think technique yeah. also goes yeah. a long way. It, it does. does. Quite a long it's, way. It's, and that it's, helps you get that. Yeah. yeah. Not, you don't uh, have technique. You just got to And then it's not fun. Yeah. I'm a firm like believer in yeah. not like just going out and getting the most expensive thing in the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. Totally but no, that and that is a really good set. Especially if you're gonna do like any sort of hobby soldering. Yeah. Bang for buck. Yeah. You're hard pressed to find a better value than that for an almost professional grade iron. Mm -hmm. If I was doing this day in and day out, I'd have a GCB. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of these days I need to give Doug back his uh, <laughs> hot air suck. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I bought a hot air station and I, I've used it once. And I'm like, oh, this is a waste of 50 bucks. There are times where that's the only tool that will do it. Mm -hmm. All the corn LEDs, dude. And I'm guessing the Helix and all the other variants. Yeah, I, I don't put the LEDs in them because yeah. hand soldering, that's just punishment. True. I can show you how that works later. Yeah. Oh, this is this the fifty or the thirty gauge? Yeah, I have no idea. Okay. So I have. I, I think I have some magnet wire that is that, and I can I just. Was drunk <laughs> <on my eye. laughs> I should not be allowed Amazon. Yeah, dude, I bought an Ergodox when I was drunk. <laughs> last. Just full stop. Mark. You're not wrong. <laughs> Bring up a, 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 a like car blow thing with your internet. <laughs> Doesn't that really apply to both? I mean, an in a, a interlock for my yeah. keyboard. Um, I do have one. Because um, uh, uh -huh. um, that's the easiest way to do macros. Yeah, yeah. Um, and handwriting macros is for suckers. I'm trying to remember if I committed it or not. I, if not, I know I have it. I just generated it yesterday. Okay. Um, yeah, I, so. just, I need the JSON to put in that. Mm -hmm. I promise. Do it. And that's why I needed to know the circuit. Mm -hmm. Oh, does the info JSON actually have the circuit info? I thought it was just the layout. There's a layout JSON that you can use to import into kbfirmware.com. Yeah. And then build your firmware that way. Oh. And then it generates the hex file and all the source files for you. But so where did, oh, like to okay. record a macro, it has a record feature that you can just do the macro. Uh huh. And it's way easier to, for doing macros, which is what I use these for, it's way easier to do it that way right. than like QMK Configurator. Uh -huh. the, okay. QMK com Configurator, to the best of my knowledge, doesn't have that record facility that KB firmware does. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, and I know the JSON file is just like... Then I don't have... I don't have that, but I can, I can help you make it, yeah. and then we can distribute it, because <laughs> that would be super helpful for everybody. Right now, um, the layout I have is it's an arrow key cluster, and then media keys up here. So previous, pause, play, uh, next, and then volume, volume up, vo or volume down, volume up. So I think a little bit useful, but um, yeah, it'd be nice to just change up the macro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just uh, print screen. Boom, when uh, you need it. Screen, but, uh, screen Screenshot. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have three IRC kick commands. Mm -hmm. One to kick him. <laughs> uh, one to kick another person who is equally as annoying as him. Hey, and one to kick whoever I have highlighted in my IRC plan. <laughs> nice. No one should ever make me off. <laughs> well, you're the only qualified adult. <laughs> All right, so 
You've just made first half of your keyboard matrix. Oh, sorry, we're not there yet. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> okay, so now that you have the switch post soldered in, take that extra leg and bend it over so that it's touching the other diode and solder that connection here, right? So we're effectively going to, effectively going to create a row reusing those diode legs. If, if you're, this, this may be kind of a tricky technique to get, you know, two wires to uh, solder together, but it's not impossible. I believe in you. If you need help, let us know. But we're going to bend those over and just create one row, right? So just like in the diagram here. So bend them over so that they are now in series, in parallel. So what I found one way that works is um, when you start from here, when you bend this over, the wire is going to stick past this other diode. If you bend it up and then bend that around it, that gives you a joint like this that makes it a little bit easier to mm -hmm. solder. And then when you're done, you'll just you'll trim up the the extra piece of this first diode, mm -hmm. and then you'll take that leg and go the other direction and do that. Yep. And feel free to get creative. Like if you want to bend it up and solder it, if you want to bend it like a full. 180 and crimp them and then solder it. That's totally fine as well. Um, but you just want to make sure that these legs have a solid connection to each other. Mm -hmm. I'm tempted to just like go ahead and build one. See, that's for me I just attached to wherever yeah so from here I actually took this wire and I bent wrapped that over yeah. and then soldered that I, the reason but, I'm doing the wire wrap the way yeah. I am though is to get better at wire wraps since mm -hmm. I just started doing yeah so what is that the tool just literally is about to buy it so there's see how there's two holes you put and that's like the old school way when they would do like proto balls. Because mm -hmm. soldering wasn't as widely available. Well, I mean, people but. still do it in, in like R&D stuff mm -hmm. when you need to like proof a circuit. And it's a much, it's faster once you know how to do that, to do it that way, than to design and etch a PCB mm -hmm. and solder up. Right, because if you want to change something out, you just annoy it. Yeah. 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 Yep. So it's a non-permanent way, though I am. But, a very, but still a very sturdy connection. Yeah, it's a very solid connection. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and it's still in use. Like People are still hand wrapping circuits. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about it in the Discord. Carlos is cheap and didn't want to buy one, so I like, bought one. <laughs> so this little thing is like twelve dollars. Yeah. Yeah, but for what it is, it's like that's real freaking expensive. <laughs> but it's a tool that does a job really well. It does. It like, does. It's the right tool for that job. Mm -hmm. And they have like a three D printed one, but I'm I I'm pretty sure that's uh, not going to be great. On my resin, I, I would worry about the torque uh -huh. snapping it. Yeah. That's why I bought them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm. So, I'm just surprised there isn't like a Chinese yum version, because it and makes sense. It probably is because if yeah. it was from Mac Mastercard, it'd be like fifty bucks. Yeah. yeah. So I looked on AliExpress; it wasn't there. That the the that was still like twelve bucks. Maybe the patent holder is just very aggressive about it. Next day. Yeah. And it showed up my house. Dude, that's cool. I'm gonna have to get so is wrapping wire. That's this a specific gauge, right? Well, I think there's various gauges. Okay. You can get wrapping wire pretty cheap too. Okay. I got a little spool of it for this. Uh huh. And I just use the different colors, um, not for anything in particular, but it, yeah. it's like 
strands of wire that don't have any casement around it. Mm -hmm. that yeah. Like a really narrow gauge. Like, yeah. You can see how thin this is. See, I'm probably going to do that with, with magnet wire. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. And, and, and this is the, the gauge? Okay. You strip off that, uh -huh. the uh, insulation. Right. And, and I just use that. Mm -hmm. and like I said, for... I, I'm wire wrapping it to learn how to wire wrap. There's no way I can compare. No, that would be too big. I mean, you can strip it and find out. Yeah. Oh, very is. barely, yeah. The dial that's like that's as uh, long as it's, or that's pretty much as wide as it can accept. Um, but that's nice. Well, I haven't tried this one with dial legs, but the one that I uh -huh. used, like the dial leg would fit in. Yeah. And you just have to be careful not to like torque off the pin. Just to confirm, I can so, cut the bit after I solder it, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. From the loop. Yeah. From the loop. Yep. Just nip that off and get out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> it's slow going, but nice. I think it's getting there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there was a Greek god that tortured his people. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is a Sisyphean task. <laughs> What do I do? With, should I snip that? Um, that yeah, that's up to you. So um, <laughs> you could try and reuse that. So like to to then connect the row wire in some future. Like you could bend it over and crimp it. Or if if you're good, um, you could actually take the wire and just wrap it around the row instead. So it's so up wait, to you. Yeah. Wait. What do you mean? What would be <laughs> if I wanted to reuse this? What's the next step? Like once I get all these rows done. Oh, do you really? Uh, Once I, you know, connect these uh -huh. and these, what's the next step? So then you'll connect, well, we'll do columns next, but um, specifically with the rows, you're then going to connect a wire to these, and then that goes to the controller. Okay. So you don't, um, technically you, you could, yeah, it doesn't actually have to connect to the end here. You could connect anywhere along the wire because they are in series. Yeah. Or in parallel, not in series. Um, <laughs> So you could you could clip it. Let me show you what I did with mine. So with the rows here, I just clipped it right there, and then you can connect anywhere to the the row wire. Oh, okay. Did Cody grab those for you? Yeah, North Cody. Like the phone. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. So you could you could if if it makes sense you know keep it and you can connect to that on the end there, um, or I you know I reach the point where it's just like whatever just throw it in there as long as it closes up. see that um, you don't have to you could cut those if you want um, yeah just so that they're out of the way they're out of, yeah just trim it so that at least it they're not going to be contacting each other just was easier yeah Yeah, so each row will connect individually. Uh, 
and then it turns back on, and then it heats back up. No, that just means it's heating. They're saying Right, we're gonna we're probably gonna wait three maybe four more minutes and then move on to the next step so um, so we don't get too far behind. My technique has been kind of to wrap them around each other a little yep. bit. Does that, that work? Yep, that's great.
All right, let's go ahead and get started on the next step. So the next step is we're going to actually now solder those rows to the controller. So up until now, we'd ignored that it even existed. So um, this is the controller we have. It's, this is the Arduino Pro Micro. Um, ignore everything else but these six pins at the bottom. Um, so we have three rows and three columns. One side is going to be rows. The other side is going to be columns. And um, that's all you need to worry about for now. So go ahead and take your um, wire that you have, strip off a little bit of the end, um, and connect it to each um, row and bring those up and solder them into the controllers in this order. If you don't do it in this order, um, the matrix is going to be off. And so you'll have to reprogram it um, to, to match that. So this is the. If you remember, this is where the, um, yeah, it's the thicker side of the case is here on the bottom. And so you'll want to connect them. So the bottom one, this is row one, row two, and then row three. Or sorry, row one is the top, row two is middle, row three is this first one. So one, two, three. Um, so you might need some wire strippers, or you'll be, you can uh, use wire cutters. Just you know, lightly cut into the insulation and then pull. Um, I have a set of V-notch cutters. If you'd like to borrow those, They're, they make quick work of this. Um, we also have another set of wire strippers up here if, if you're more comfortable with those. Um, My vice is somewhere too. Yeah. Um, strippers. And then we've got a set of uh, vice wire uh, strippers. Do you mind um, helping me out with just the orientation? Sure. Of this is going to snap in like that, right? Yes, and but then we're going to, oh, okay. this is the orientation oh, okay. we're going with, right? Okay. And then I'll have the and then, in there. Yep. And then this is, will match yep. up with those three, there. Those three at the bottom will be where you connect your rows. Okay, and the and bottom one here goes to this one. Yes. So the last one goes to the f to the okay. nearest one, and then like that. Okay. Sounds good. Thank yep. you. So you'll take your wire, um, cut off a bit of it, strip it down, um, so that you can solder this row, and then just measure it till you get over here as well. Do you recommend working from any particular side? Um, no. It it's up to you. Yeah. Whatever works. Okay. I, I I would probably say go with the shorter one just because less. Like one. Yeah. If you make mistakes, it's just less material you're wasting. But there should be plenty of wire if you run out. We've got more up front. Um, but yeah. I ran my uh, things to the wrong side, so they're on the right side instead of the left side. Can that be okay. reprogrammed? Okay. Um, or should I wire so, to the other side? Yeah. So fun fact. You do not have to use the end of the row to connect it. Because these are in parallel, you can use you can attach your wire anywhere along that wire. So even if you ran those so to the corner here, you could snip it off, and you could attach here, here. You could you could still reuse those. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. um, how how hard is it to uh, do it in software? Um, is it possible? Mm, it is possible. It's not as easy. It's not a not as beginner friendly as I would like it to be, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you should still just be able to. So I'll snip these off and then attach them to this this side. Um, sure, really it, it really doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could you could attach them so you have it like this. Um, you could still attach them here and then run them over, mm -hmm. or uh, let me show you mine. That might help. So here are my row wires. Uh -huh. They're not even attached to the end. I just uh, wrap the wire around and then solder to that. Uh -huh. And then you run that over. Oh, OK. Right? I see. So y it can, you can attach that wire here. Um, if you want to still use your wires over here, that's fine. Um, yeah, so no, I, I like how you did it here. Yeah. yeah. So I'll probably just do yeah. the same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. The strip
bit of that wire, wrap it around the, the diode leg, solder it there. Yeah. So does that make sense here? So here is my row. Okay. Here's that row one wire. Okay. So I just hit attach it there. Again, you don't have to, it doesn't matter where along the row you're attaching it, just as long as it attaches. So you could use this end here, you could connect it along here. If you really wanted to, you could go all the way to this end. It just has to connect anywhere along the row and then run to the right pin. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Top. Yeah, yours are reversed so a little bit. That should be okay. You, okay. Yeah, yeah, you're totally fine. Um, you'll just still want to do the same thing. Um, attach the row to the right pin. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so th my technique here is I'll strip a little bit of the wire and loop it over the the diode leg and then solder that. Oh, yeah. So you still have the same row. The only difference is yours is facing the other way. It should, it's electrically going to be exactly the same. So you just need to connect that wire and then run it up to the right pin. Uh, it depends on the gauge of the core. Um, I don't even remember because they're Ethernet, so they're. Uh, yeah. That looked like that worked. And the extra headers from the Pro Micro aren't going to be used. I would like to keep them because I use them. I have a shit ton of them that I don't use. I'll bring them for you sometime. Because they're just taking up space. I'll just throw them in my kit. It's just, I find myself, like, this would come in handy if I just had it. Yeah. And then not having it. Yeah, that's annoying. I got that Pelican case from Reggie. Oh, dude, lucky. I got, like, six of those from Reggie. <sighs> I bought them all. Dude. I wanted one, but I don't have a use for it. I don't, I don't carry stuff around. And I have toolboxes that I throw my stuff into, so. That's, that's why like, I almost all the same color. Almost. This one's the off one. Those? Yeah. Those are just um, SP grab bags. Mm hmm. Signature plastics. I really like that row 3 uh, SA. Mm hmm. All uniform. I'm gonna get an uh, an XDA set. See how I like that in between DSA and an NSA. Yeah, I've, I've run XDA. Yeah. So it's basically is that the DSA. one? It's just the the wider. So it doesn't. So the wider top. Much, so mm -hmm. It's a sharper side. Mm -hmm. But it's basically it's a, a perfectly <laughs> symmetrical. So when mm -hmm. I do, I'll let you know. I've had some. Yeah. I think I sold them all. Oh yeah. Didn't like them or? Sold them with boards. So mm. I had Godspeed. Oh, yeah. And those went to uh, Sergeant Redbeard. Mm -hmm. And I had another set on the XD75 that got off the of Duna mm -hmm. that I sold to Barry. Mm -hmm. Actually, he yeah, sold that his, example. He still owes me $120. Yeah. I'm just going to take it. Yep. I unfortunately use the same color wires, but if you if you want to get crafty, you can use one color wire for your rows and another color wire for your columns. It's up to you. Dude, yeah. That's was, shipped. Uh, dude, did you see that I freaking bought the wrong kit? I wanted freaking... There wasn't a right kit for me. Yeah. So I have a bunch of signs that I won't use. Or, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Cody's? Cody's, Cody's, Cody's Nightmare? Like or? No, who designed the set? Was it Reggie? Oh, no, no uh, Riley. Riley, oh, yeah. Okay. He hates Ortho. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the problem. No ortho support, yeah. I'm going to put it on an ortho board. Yeah. Well, I might put it on my Claris. Uh, mm. I just don't know if it's going to look good with purple. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I don't. I feel like it won't. Yeah. I'm, I don't, I don't I'm gonna to put it, it. I'm gonna use it on my corn. Well, no, I have a DZ60 with a five degree cyan case. I don't know if it'll go with the cyan case. Because the blue is mm -hmm. the blue is slightly more teal than it is yeah. uh, cyan. So. Uh, but I may buy that like wicked cool filament. Mm, it, yeah. Like, Sixty bucks for a three quarter kilo. Yeah. Is that the the uh, what is it, Merlin's yeah Merlin wizard something yeah something Germany. like that mm -hmm. um, I might buy that yeah and I got the STL for that five degree case oh yeah I got a five degree numpad Cody North Cody printed it for me and I I have yet to wire it up just haven't Sometimes hand wiring is an exercise in patience. Does anybody need any help? Any keyboard one exercise in doing this right? Yeah. But wrong pin. Wrong pin. Yep. So it, this is gonna be the bottom pin. Oh, okay. Alright, so the USB comes up here at top. Here, let me put this away. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. And you'll probably want to make that a little bit shorter, okay. just so that it's uh, because you're gonna close it up like a clamshell, <laughs> and so it only needs like that exact distance between here and there. So it, if you leave it that long, it's gonna you're gonna have to fold it in. So you could probably make it um, probably cut it to there or so. It is really hard. I yeah. Picture, yeah. I, I'm kind of purposely leaving it like a bit open-ended. There, we, you learn most by trying things out, making a few mistakes, making adjustments along the way. So it's actually coming down like this, right? There's room for it. Yeah. Well, no. it's a lot. Yes, there should be room for it to be uh, folded in. You can always, when you bring them together, it'll cause the wires to, you know, kind of scrunch up. And then there you just take them, fold them right over, and it, it'd be good. There's a reason for my hands. I just had to think about it. Yeah, because I, I had it oriented backwards when I first did it, though, so I can see why confusion. Yeah. So, Mike, if I can stop you really fast. Oh, wait, no, Please. you've got it. You've got it. This is okay? Yeah. I was going to say, if you're going from the bottom, you're going to have a bit of a gap, but um, you're going from the top, so should we good to go. What's that? Um, okay, so you're going to have a little bit of a, a tilt to it because the, the wire is going to come underneath it. Um, and that's okay. Well, I, my, my guess I've ever clipped it if it goes the other way, huh? Because I figured it's still going to stick out the other side a little bit. Yeah, it will stick out the other side, but you could take flush cutters on the other side right. and then it would, it would lay flatter on here. Okay. So. Yeah, I think you could actually pull that through. Just, just heat it up, right? Yep, just heat it, and it'll pull right out. So, this one to this one? Yes. Yep. Perfect. And so this is what I was telling her. You'll want to come, those wires should come across from the top. Oh, they should go down. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's going to lay flat right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, you could go from the bottom, but then... It might be raised or tilted or something. Something like that. Do you, uh, where we're trying, trying to 
Yeah, do. Do you have the rhythm now? Is there a better way to do this? Yeah. No, uh -huh. uh, it's up to you guys. Okay. I think a lot of it is learning. Um, I would actually take this and then curl it over. It was breaking when I tried to curl it over. Like yeah? That. Just make a little hook? Yeah, so let me, let me see if I can do that. Okay, sure. Do I want more room on my, where I am? Um, no. Strip the wire? No, you're good. So just a little hook like that. Pull it right there. Oh, and that, yeah. that will give you at least like some, a little bit of pull. <laughs> Okay. Um, if you wanted to, you could even wrap that underneath and then just solder it there. Oh, or, okay. if you really want to help yourself, take this and crimp it down a little. Sorry, it is a little finicky. We're going to take that and crimp it down. There oh, you go. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Then I can probably yeah. just do I'll that. I'll do that. Okay. 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 So that sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Let's see here. All right. Does anybody want to, you know, double check a second set of eyes to make sure all's good? Yep. Perfect. Slap his hand as hard as you can. Yeah. yeah. Maybe not while I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I will burn myself at my own risk. Okay, <laughs> so here is a little bit of a problem. This exposed wire, you don't want that mm -hmm. um, because if these rows touch, the oh. they might it might uh, cause the matrix to, to start pressing things you don't want. Okay. Um, so, so is that repairable at this point? Yeah, I'd say so. But let's do this. Um, yeah. So let's just cut this whole thing off. Um, so you don't need that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let's take this. And I'll show you the technique I showed these guys over here. Um, so let's take this and cut it a little. So we're going to take this. We're going to create a little loop. Hmm. We're going to take that and then wrap it around here. And to make our lives easier, let's just put it right here in the middle. And then we're going to crimp it a little bit. Uh, maybe even more. Ah, shoot. Still not quite as crimped. So I'd like it to be. All right, that's pretty good. That'll give you um, at least like enough stability that now you can solder that, and then um, and then from there, you know, align stuff and then connect to the controller here. Nice. Yeah. Thanks. So that technique would probably really help for this, mm -hmm. and we'll probably reuse that technique for the columns. So. Yeah. So now that I've accomplished running YouTube by looping that, I can just trim that up the loop. Right? Yes. Yeah. If you'd like. Just and just to get it out of the way. It's all connected, so it doesn't really matter. But I don't want it to. Right. Get it. It just uh, would eliminate any issue yeah. in case something was touching or something like that. Right. So. So. Just to confirm, this one is cutter. this row. Yes. And the middle and the other row. Correct. And um, so you don't have to use this end. Right. If you wanted to, you could loop it right there and then connect it. Yeah. Um, In fact, I was kind of thinking of doing that yep. since that's... It's, it's much easier if you do it that way. Right yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. You guys good? I have a question. I'm using yeah. Sorry. First of all, yes, is this... Yes, I'm pretty sure it's right. Um, but should I wrap these yes. around, or like how far in? Um, I wouldn't suggest wrapping them really. Do insert them through, um, but once you solder it from the top, so add a little bit of solder up here, and then down here you'll just want to cl um, cut them flush okay. so that it can lay flat right here. 
Good progress. Shoot. <laughs> I still have yeah, you you can still you still got enough wire there. It's it's fine. Next is for you to wait for everybody else, young man. I'm just kidding. So if you want to get started on the next part, um, I, think we've, I think we've got enough people making progress. Should we wait a little bit longer to get started on the next part? Yeah. Do people feel like they're still catching up? Yeah, Okay. All right. Well, let's give it a, a few more minutes. more progress now start getting your row these wires pins, right um, yes okay. so you're gonna bridge and all rows. of those yep okay. so um, the insulation on the Ethernet wire is it's kind of thin enough that you could just solder right onto it it'll melt move out oh, of the way okay. um, you might need to increase the temperature if it's not just moving right out of uh, melting right through or you could just take these and um, cut off about six millimeters mm -hmm. on this and end, score it, and then it. score it okay. and pull, score, pull. Yeah. Um, that'll probably be the easiest technique. I don't know how, what the that best way to, will be to share amongst everybody, but I'll I'll be here to help. That's the technique I use. But. Off. I don't know. Uh, it looks like it was a cold solder joint. Oh yeah. No. Yeah, it was still cold. Uh -huh. yeah. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> you can, it won't help you though. I'm finding it difficult to attach this wire. Yeah. Do you want me to help? Uh, See if I can give it a shot? Before I kind of soldered it to give it a blue and <laughs> plastic. I think I can get it. I just you got to push more solder in there. Yep. Yeah, uh, it kind of goes off to the side. Um, okay. Uh, you need to clean the, t the tip. I'm sure the yeah. Yeah, so that will help. Uh, okay, so should I do it? Nope. Don't touch the the solder to the to the iron. Try and heat just the area with the wire, and then push the the solder into that. Yeah. Okay, looks like it is, it's not really working out very well. Here, let's do this, because you're, 
melting that into the case. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it looks like you got you got a connection. I would still add more um, so that you have like this, like a Hershey's Kiss kind of a. That's a lot. <laughs> it is. Okay. You're not. You, there's no like reason to save it. Hershey's. Yeah, like a mini Hershey's Hershey's Kiss, like just a small, like small cone um, around the the connect the hole. Oh, it's okay. Yep, and that's that's a little bare, but I wouldn't I wouldn't redo that. That's <laughs> that's fine. Um, okay. Do that for the next ones. You good? I think you're good. Yep. Yeah. There you go. How are you guys doing? Uh, as long as you don't look too close, it's not too early. Yeah. I would never admit that I make circuit boards and stuff. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I think we over half of the class has gotten all the row wires done. Um, so we're gonna move on to the next step. It's not complicated, so if you're a little behind, don't, don't worry about it too much. Um, the next step is now make your columns. So take your wire and go across the pins that are not connected yet, all right? So loop around here with your wire loop around here, loop around here, and then bring that column wire up to the first column. So this is column one, column two, column three. So connect them in that order, one, two, three. Um, if you're using the ethernet wire, which is horrible. horrible, and I think all of you are actually using the ethernet wire, so perfect. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the, the insulation for it is, is really thin. So if you want to be ambitious, just burn off the insulation, or use um, wire cutters to separate the insulation. So you just uh, just cut it, but don't cut through the wire. Just cut the insulation, and uh, and then just like pull it a little bit to make a little bit of a gap. All right. So let me let me uh, show you. If anybody wants a, a reference, I can show you what mine looks like. Um, so you can get an idea what I was I was talking about. So here I I cut the uh, the insulation and I pulled it a little bit and then that gave me that gap and then I just uh, because it was taut I just pulled the I, I was able to just solder there. Okay, yeah. does that make sense? I tried to do the, the splitting, but with this with uh, shielding on this, it really doesn't like moving around. Oh really? I'll see if it's easy on so at least do it on the the on the end there. That would probably give you at least a start, right? So yeah, trim off the end. Make yourself a loop and put it around that, and then solder that in. And so do you, do you loop it around each one? Um, you don't have to. No. So, so if, I just if it's easier, then yes. If it's not, then don't worry about it. I don't. I don't. So um, I took this wire, cut the insulation, pushed it. Mm -hmm. um, and then soldered just right to that where they intersect. Okay. Um, is there a better wire option than the Ethernet wire? Um, there is. It's something called magnet wire, which is a wire. It looks like it's not insulated, okay. but it actually has a very thin coat of enamel. Oh, okay. And um, and it's the same idea, is that enamel will burn away as you apply a hot enough iron to it. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because they're still insulated. Yeah. 
try not to breathe the insulation. Yeah. I'm breathing worse than the red. Yeah. I heard something about inversion here in Salt Lake. That looks like a good connection, yeah? Yeah? Yeah, And then I'll just, because I tried to do the, I cut off too much of the insulation on this end. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'll just cut it off and then. Yeah, you just have to be careful because that wire there, that bare wire cannot touch this row. Right, right. Yeah. So I, I plan on moving it down. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Just making sure you're good to go. Yeah. I think so. I'm slow and steady. Uh huh. Last row wire. Yep. yep. Looks like you've got it. You got your rows. Yeah, I. Uh, I'm having a little Columns crisis at work. Too. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry to hear that, man. <laughs> All right, yeah, you got him. Nice. Like I said, a lot of this is, is like, it's a lot of learning, figuring stuff out, like what techniques works be work best. Um, may seem like a simple electronics project, but um, there's a lot to learn. You, you really develop a good technique for soldering if you can get just bare wire on wire connections. So might help clean your wire. Yeah, you could always try burning the insulation off of the wire before putting it down onto the thing. Um, you can always try just like chopping it up with some wire strippers or, or cutters. Just chopping up the uh, the insulation that might help at least like cut through the insulation and then as the solder flows or as the heats up like the insulation will pull back yeah do the second yeah so for this one, this is row oh. one. Connect those. Row two. Connect that. Row three. That way. Would it be easier to do the the second step first and then get all these wires and then solder them together? Um, or do we know? It's up to you. Um, okay. I'll do that. Whatever you'd prefer. Yeah. At the end, I'll show the full diagram so that um, you'll still be able to identify what goes where. But this is row zero, or sorry, row one, okay. two, three. Yep. Just um, like just yep, like one, yep, two, exactly. Does it matter because they're all identical? Um, it does matter because of, like, for it to detect a, a certain key, it has to have the coordinate. So it's pinned wow. this to this means that it's a certain key, right? So it does matter the order. Or is that what you were asking? Yeah. Yeah. Also, this switch seems to, like, this one's oh, immediately. This one seems to. Yeah, that one's, like gummed up a little yeah yeah um it might be easier for you right now if you want to undo that loop and pull the switch out and then put a new one in so i just cut off the diode no 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 so um i would I do this heat it up and then take yep. the diode off. so grab this heat it up and pull on it mm -hmm. and then um okay. you'll now have the diode off and then pull out the switch. Yeah, before the other yeah, one. before you add the column to it. Yeah, I'll go grab you another jade. There you go. I hope that's not all my wire. I have left. You got brown wire over there. Do you want a different color wire? Yeah, let's do it different. All right, I'll get you. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll trade you on some brown wire. 
Oh, Here you go. Yeah. Here Some white stripe. Yeah, we got white and brown. Okay. So mm -hmm. this will be my other palms. Yeah. So we're just going, are these going on this side? Yes. So it'll be the bottom three. Um, and you're just going to go against these right here, right? And yes. They're gonna the uncolored open part of it. On yes. Or, or burn it. Or burn it. Um, whatever the preferred method is. Yeah. Not loving it. By the end of this, you'll appreciate it. It's a labor of love. I'll appreciate it. I'll probably never do it again. <laughs> Yeah. This is what robots are for. Or I was going to say, but I was definitely. I think we really. It's kind of using burn off to me. It's going to work that well. Yeah, so you might turn. You might need to turn this up even more. Oh. Okay. That might help. Just. Just remember that now the uh, the iron is hotter, so more risk of severe burn. <laughs> so the left column goes Yes. So this is column one. Goes up to the very top. Middle one goes into the second to last. Third column goes into the last pin. I don't think so. I, I think that's actually a really good length for it. Okay. Right? It just seems so short because everything else is way too long. So yeah. when I go through the top mm -hmm. Yeah. The yeah, there you go. Pushing it up. Uh -huh. Close now, to it. do do see if it can just still like sit, sit here. Right. Oh, it might be a little small. Okay. Um patch it. Right? So take this. Uh, do that hook connection okay. and solder a connection there, and then maybe later you can I've take um, you can take heat shrink or just electrical tape. Um, should be just fine. Okay, I don't have it with me. In fact, let's see if we have some electrical tape in here. Seems so fine now. Browns and reds are a little oh. lighter. It's so it might be because of tightness. But they like the feedback. So is this one still doing it as well? A little bit, so yeah. yeah but I'm talking about it's noti like I'm some talking of them it's noticeable. Yeah, but of that just tells me it's not like a switch. Yeah. It may be this little bit right here. So, uh, so that's a 3D print tightness. Mm -hmm. okay. So the housing itself is like crushing it, and right here there's a it, you can actually see the little clip bar in there. Uh -huh. um, so that might be too tight. In which case, uh, you could pop out the switch and then like file it down. I would even say, let's see if you could just take a screwdriver and just push it out um, if it is gumming up like that. But yeah. Do are you doing one that has a little bit of all them? Yeah, I don't. See, so it looks like, like, they're curved. Like the yeah. If this is straight and it's curved, yep. is it supposed to be like that? Um, ideally, no. Okay. So, but, but it might be because of the tolerances of a 3D print are are a lot smaller. So it might just be just like a bit too tight. And I've seen that with some other switches and on 3D prints and stuff. Um, I don't know what to do because I don't think anybody else is having that issue. Yeah, 
Can we add one more switch off <laughs> to the side so we can make a number pad? Sure. <laughs> You can program it so that you can have multiple layers too. Oh, so yeah, like yeah, hold yeah. one down yeah, and then it's now other numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Add cording. Yeah. With QMK, you're oh, basically yeah. limited to the uh, size of the EEPROM memory, and it's uh, 32k. 32k. So you can do a lot with that. You could have 12 to 20 layers, and then there's tap dance, which mm -hmm. is a, a like tap codes to switch layers that you can do. Yeah. Like, so if you press it once, it does something. Double tap it, and it does something else. Tap it a hundred times, it does something else. So. And then holding it, right? And hold. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't remember. Think tap dance plays with hold. No. But, like, but it does have. There layers, is momentary layering. Yeah. That, so typically with layers, that's what you do. Is you have like a raise lower, and that's how you change layers. And it's just another mod key. It's like shift, but instead of upper case, it now makes J underscore. I, I need to re redo mine, because I, uh, I mean, no, my second layer has never worked. Is it yeah, frustrating? I, uh, I a little bit. The, the 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 no. uh, it was going so well in the last round, but, uh, but you know, yeah. it's hard to actually tell if I've got enough of the wire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would, let's see if, let's see if we can use this. So, and it looks like that oh, one I came, think off. It even came off. Yeah. yeah. So, good. let's. So, that exposes enough of it for sure. Okay. Oh, right. yeah. Okay. That should, that should help get you a good solid connection. Nice. Yeah. So you probably could have done that with the flush cutters as well, or or pliers. It's just, it's just like, how do you how, like, how do you, you keep improvising? I guess a bit. Uh, it's a bit of improvising of like, what? How can I achieve what I'm trying to do here? So, that's part of the art of the hand wire. Well, I have a question on the melt wire technique. I'm not there yet, but is that like? Um, part of the soldering, like you're you're melting it and applying solder at the same time. Um, or no, you'd want to burn it off first and like kind of get it out of the way. Okay. Um, or you could just maybe uh, I'll I'll give it a shot. So. Yeah, I would actually say solder that first. Okay. Because then you have like an anchor point. Okay. Um, I'll give that a shot. Yeah. That's what I did. I anchored it and then I went for the other ones. Yep. Now, one thing that might help is you can try, yeah, great. You can try cutting it with the wire stripper. And it's just, just like, you know, cut through the insulation, maybe wiggle it, get a little bit of a gap, and then apply the heat. That may cause the the insulation to like draw away, oh, right? Okay. It may just like shrink away. It's like uh, mm -hmm. creating a yeah. Spot it's just like yeah, at least a place to get started. Um, so up to you. Those are going to be riskier because you might cut through the the wire, but you could also just lift this up, right? Oh yeah. So like you just need to cut it right there. So lift it up and then just cut right there. You know. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that went through. Okay. Let's try the 30 gauge, yeah. Okay, so cut it, and then just like kind of go up and down a little bit. Don't pull it too hard, because you don't want to pull on the wire, but you want to. You do want these two pieces to separate a little bit. Okay. Unfortunately, like uh, the Ethernet wire insulation is not great for that, but you're just trying to get through it a little bit. Yeah, okay. that's a great start. I think that's good. Yeah. And then I so now, if you wanted to, try applying the iron to it, and like kind of... Uh, move it away a little bit. So you want to grab the wire, to hold it stable. Okay. You want to do this? Yeah. Yeah. So 
I can already see some of the solder is being drawn on that. Yeah. So you're you're essentially tinning the uh, the wire now. Oh, so that's, that's not good, or no, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that means solder's uh, sticking to it. Okay. So now you'll take that, put it right there. Um, okay, that's not too bad. And then okay. and then cool. solder it down. That's yeah. Pretty cool. I like it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, man. Is it still being finicky? Yeah, so when I when I put this one in, it seems to like affect the other two. Yeah, it's pushing them. Yeah, so um, like a file or something? I don't have one, and I think Marv said he didn't bring his own. Do you have a knife? A knife would also work, just to shave off a little bit. Oh, actually, I have an exacto. And emery board. Oh, an emery board might work. If it can fit inside of a switch hole. So you can try Exacto and Kate has a memory board for you. Thank you. So yeah, sorry about that. How much do you switch You're learning. Uh, those are I last I checked those are about thirty cents a switch. You want to go these on this end, right? So um, they're being squished. So by adding this, it's putting pressure this way. So you'll want to file oh, on oh, these ends. Two. Okay. That's yeah. What I mean. Okay. Yep. Yeah. That makes sense. Yep. You got it. So one technique, if you wanted to, you could have them snake. So here, you've got to come in this way. On this side, let's go over here, and then on this side, go this way. Oh, I like right? that. So that you now have, like, it's kind of uh, more pressed together. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead and cut these however you want. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, I would actually suggest cut it to the length that you want. Oh, um, so right there, and then strip that end, create a little loop, solder yeah. it there. Does that work out? Yeah, it ended up going on the other one. Nice. And now I just got to do this last one. Yep. Just got to get both ends in. Yeah. It's, it's a technique. You're learning it. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Thank you. I got to measure where to... I guess I can do, like, another one half on the other side. I forgot to measure them all first. Oh, yeah. Attach. Oh, you're doing good. So if you wanted to... Having it stick to the switches. Yeah. Um, you could try that loop technique. That's totally great as well. I I think, I don't know, because I, I struggled with it mm -hmm. here, and that worked really well here, and it didn't work so well there. Yeah. But so there, you could also try snaking it. So like, um, rather than having them all come this way, you mm -hmm. could try doing like that. OK. Um, Attention. Yep, it applies a little bit of attention. And the, the solder is rigid enough that it, it does like seem to hold that he did that over there. Yeah. Yeah. And then I would even bend this around the corner a little bit. So that you have that a bit more, a little bit more of tension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, if you wanted to, you actually may have a bit of success if you grab some pliers I've tried. and pull that yeah, way. Yeah, that's what I had been doing, yeah? and I got yeah. some success. Uh huh. Like I said. Slowly but surely. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a pain in the ass. Do you want to try some pliers to like pull on the installation with pliers? Mm -hmm. Let me find you some. Can I borrow these for a sec? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Here you go. doesn't doesn't like it. I worked on the other one. But I hold on. I can just do this. Let's do that this smart. Yep. I have a little bit of cap on tape. Uh -huh. Yeah I was gonna ask, do you have electrical tape anywhere? It is. But it's too thin. It's probably enough to insulate the yeah. pro micro. I, it's too thin this way. Yeah. No, the, the fixes some have needed is like at covering the wire, uh, the column wire. Um, there should be electrical wire here somewhere. I'll see if I can find it. I couldn't find any earlier. Yeah. Uh, but I do have the, the cap on tape is there. Okay. It, it'll be a pain because it's so thin. Yeah, but you know, if we don't have other options. Whatever you want. Whatever you want. If it's okay, I'm going to grab these as well. Here are these. Oh. And now you've just executed like a oh, bunch of special moves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen. Extra copy paste boards. Uh huh. I've seen so. World of Warcraft layouts. I've seen oh, yeah. Photoshop layouts. Starcraft layouts. Um, yeah. use like, macros, uh, if the league allows it, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I don't know. <laughs> 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 it seems pretty uh, close to cheating, so. <laughs> I mean, well, they have some built in, so that's true. It's really true. Oh, like, nice. Some people will do macros hey, where they'll be like, I'll shoot a fireball at you and then give you a. How about some electrical tape? tape? Oh, you got it. it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> okay. Or flip you oh, off. Oh, but you need some for here. Okay, yeah. 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 Right there. Perfect. <laughs> Fully one quarter of the keyboard macros on my two main macro pads are to troll people in IRC. <laughs> There you go. See. <laughs> Is there some water I can get? Some people will do macros for ASCII art. <laughs> <laughs> or emoticons. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dang. All right. I'll grab one of these. Thanks. Like rain on this project. Yeah, I mean, it's your imagination. This is a visual assist circuit. I gotta take off. All right. Some people, I mean, I would suggest doing this, but some people who aren't very secure conscious are known to take passwords. So, we're the one. Yeah, I'll. I'll post the link to the documentation, so next time if you want to keep going on your own. Um, if you don't have an iron, let me know. I'll, I'll bring one to work, and we'll finish it up together, man. Nice. Yeah. Take it easy. The key to the kingdom. Don't do that. It's a bad idea. It is a bad idea. I'm not saying it's a good one. I explicitly said yeah. people who are not security conscious. So after this is flashing the firmware. Is it done? It's a really bad advice. It's a number of A's. I know. It gives me A's just thinking about it. <laughs> all right, and once you have all the yeah, columns connected, tell you're done. Do that. From there, we'll just need to flash the firmware on your controller. Before I do the next step, can you make sure that they all feel like super expensive? Like they should. So, probably real quick. If you want keycaps, I brought a giant bag of keycaps. There are some rules. You can't take anything that are non-normal symbols, letters, numbers. If there's anything else, any artwork or anything like that, it's off limits. And if it's like fouled up in any way, misprinted, double printed, anything like that, I collect those. So you don't get any of those, but you can have any of the keycaps other than that in these two bags. This is the only one that it's feels maybe a little bit more, and it might be because it's oh, yeah. in the middle. So right, it's it's getting pressure on all yeah. four sides, so maybe that one. But so I, I was actually trying to like rotate it, just like blind to see which if I can notice a difference. And that's the only one that maybe 
uh, there's a little bit of resistance, but it doesn't feel gummy. It's so is coming up and down. It just feels a little bit harder to push down. Okay, I think that's fine. It was yeah. just the one, like, it would, like, yeah, it would just, stay down yeah, to, like, or, like, drag up, yeah. So, um, yeah, so, oh, yeah. So, um, you, you won't need a new set of diodes? Can I, can I just, do I? You can. It's up to you. Use them? Yeah, if, if it's, yeah, if it's easier for you, do it. Yeah, nice. All right, let's go flash it. Oh, yeah, one of the fat ones. Like these. So how do you? Yeah, yeah. I've got like literally a hundred of them. <laughs> um, when you're, you put it in the CD, are they three different? And then yes. You put your drawer on it. Anytime I can, I like, need one. Cut on that. And you stick it in, and you solder those on. And so those are the pins that this becomes sockable. And then you just solder the sockets into the board. Some people might say. The board has to. What the heck happened to my presentation? I'm, I'm, I, I consider myself, you know, I, I try That's a really nice print. I like, I like, things, I like that, whatever that filament is that, like... Did Scotty print that for you, Charles? Um, yes. He still owes me. Yeah, you're, uh... A softball case? Yep. It's only been a year. Or are you being... I've got like a hundred My My family. What okay, happened to my pro micro? <laughs> 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 That's why I did it when I was cleaning it. I could go with something. Are you freaking kidding me? This is... It like cleared itself. Yeah, absolutely. My life is substantially better because of it. Can you use my pass or... I just used the last password, okay. and then I have two up there. Yeah. Yeah. I, when you get a second flag, I would like to move uh, just a second. Yeah. When you got it. I, it like is gone. What do you mean it's gone? It's, it's like gone. No. Don't. Command Z, man. Command Z. There. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 The freak? I always do the first one yes. yes. to anchor it because that one is so freaking mean. Yeah. But what I do okay. is I snake it so that's easier to like. Oh. Alright, go around. I wasn't going to use this, but now I have to use this. That's what you're using. I lost a pro micro. I was like, okay. I hope I'm able to melt these while I watch. Yeah, I've been melting them this time. I don't know about the brown hair. I'm in the green. Okay. Probably driving the crazy with these clicks. Oh, I've gotten used to it. It's All right. Um, where are my tweezers? Are you freaking kidding me? I don't have tweezers. Do you have tweezers, Marv? Perfect. All right, um, let's plug it in. Oh, shoot. This will work. Oh, shoot. So I put the socket in it like that, and then I cut off the little wild part that's up. Uh, what I was intending to do with that oh, yeah. is um, reverse sockets yeah, and put the pins in it because the sockets wouldn't fit in the holes in that. There's always some but they didn't for micro. But it just turned out to be a giant angle. But I lost my permission. Okay. And then arrows are working. Volume's working. And then these are media keys. So you are. Yeah, it's working. There you go. Thank you for doing this class. Yeah, man. It's little. It was a pain in the ass, but you learn. Um, so from here, you could just super glue that down, or if you have foam tape. The problem with foam tape is it does make it larger. So I used foam tape, 
but the clearance is just oh, such that too. yeah uh, but the clearance is such that it's actually pushing the pro micro up gotcha. so that's what I was like yeah it's just okay. let people figure out you could also use um, hot glue yeah I think I'll hot glue it later hot glue works but also if it's just gonna be in there like that it, you could just probably leave it as is but yeah if you wanted to next time you could actually add a piezo speaker um, this one is set up to do a Legend of Zelda chime. That's cute. Yeah. What's up? Don't want to wire it wrong. Yep. Make sure I got that one to there, and then that's the middle, and that's the Right. Yep. I would never do a full size keyboard. I would do a full size keyboard because full size keyboards are for size. Me and my less than 50% board. Are you a 40%? So now, so I think I've got that sorted out now. So okay. what I'm doing is I'm soldering this to this, and then I'm burning this so that I can make a connection here. Um, no, these need to be columns. So they need to go this oh, in this bad. direction. My but bad. yeah, yes, yeah. So what would help the most is probably take this, make a little loop, solder that down, uh -huh. and then burn the um, the insulation off, uh -huh. and then attach it here. Okay, and. Um, you might need to turn up the temperature. Actually, yours looks like it's at a really high temperature anyway. 600? Yeah. Is that high for so? I think oh, no, no, no. Uh, 325 is high. Yeah, you might want to turn it up to like 375. So about 700. Um, and that's just to, to burn it. You could you could try cutting the insulation first and like kind of wiggling it around. Don't don't cut through the wire. Um, and then when you apply heat, it like the the insulation kind of pulls away or retracts, right? Uh -huh. um, so that's also another technique. Okay. So. Um, and then, do I want? Let's see. Okay. And then, where yeah. do I when I connect to the Arduino? Where should I run my uh, things from when these are all connected? And all yeah. Right? Okay. So go down in this w direction. So put that loop there. Come around here, and then. You're going to connect to these three pins. Uh -huh. The diagram up there shows where the columns connect. So this first column on, on yeah. So, so on the top, the top yeah, ones, yeah. Let's look at this. So this is column one, two, and three. Uh -huh. So column one, two, and three. Yep. So okay. there you go. It'll be this, this top. Right. Yes, this is the top. So we'll start from the bottom. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Is there any off-the-shelf keyboard that you like, or are you just going to Um, it depends on your requirements and your range. Um, if if you want like a just a decent keyboard, there's a couple of sub one hundred dollar ones that I'd recommend. GMMK is one of them. It's RGB. It uh, it's hot swappable, so you can get different switches. Um. And it's it's relatively cheap, and the only downside is it's not programmable. Uh, these ones? Yeah. Yeah. No. No. I don't see any all red ones over here. Is it okay to flash before finishing? Yes. Yeah, so if you don't finish, bring it up here, let's flash it, and you can uh, connect the, the remaining wires at home. So. 
Okay. Now we'll just test it. You got down arrow, up arrow, left, right. Oh, right doesn't seem to be working. Oh, yeah, column. Yeah. Column's missing. So, yeah, and then the others seem to be working. Cool. So, there you go. Thank you. Yep. Test it. Down, left, right, up, medias, or volumes, and then these are media controls. So play, pause, previous, next. So um, there you go. If you want to reprogram it, I'll be sharing out the firmware. So um, so you can add your own macros and do. this bad boy. Oh, I'm going to set this down. Test it. Down, up, left, right, media, media, or uh, volume up and down. And then these are media keys. So previous, play, pause, next. And then uh, I'll be sharing out the firmware so you can tinker with it, get good at it, add your own macros, and all that. Yeah. <laughs> And it'll, it's on the last slide. I just want to leave this diagram up for those guys yeah. in the back. And I'll also share out the this info on the Meetup page. Um, if not through me, I'll send it to Marv. Marv will post it on the group so that you all can have this info if you want to um, go home and try this for yourself, by yourself. Go forth and teach others the beauty of hand wiring a keyboard. Yeah, it'll get tricky with the extra wires, but you just gotta gotta push them in, just write them out. Yeah, don't catch them in the cat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a buddy of mine de designed it, and I was like, "Yeah, that's great." And then I realized, "Yeah, I probably should have put a little bit more of a gap in there because it would make it easier." Um, but it's a nice little macro pad to leave at your desk. Yeah. So, 
We throw all the toll we don't have your hands with. How are you guys doing? Anybody? Well, yeah, managed to you. strip like all of it off. Yeah. That's um, going to work okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what you want. Yeah, so I don't have to burn it. Yeah, yeah. And now if um, what would help you is try going through and snaking it, right? So go on this side and then on this side, um, and that will give you some connection there, right? Mm -hmm. So, so to like kind of hold it in place. Yeah, yeah. So bring, you know, strip it here, yep. wrap it around a little. Um, and then you'll have a good connection and then solder those together. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for coming. How are you guys doing? Good. So close. You're so close. Oh. So these are now available. If somebody wants to, this may help pull those wires even better. So you take this, it's a V notch, you cut. And then you just kind of like slightly open it more and use that to pull. Does that make sense? Here, let me show you. So these, use these to cut through, uh -huh. but don't cut through the wire. Just cut through the insulation and then pull like that. Does that make sense? Yeah, but it's really needs just to be, uh, big yeah. That, like, yeah. So you could do that by so I'll strip yeah, off a little bit so that I can, yeah. I can push it. Sure. Okay, or or if you want to be real careful, you could also do one cut, two cut, <laughs> and then... Yeah, that's kind of what I did with these. Yeah, and then cut through there. That's, that's a little bit nicer and easier, though, the first one. It is, yeah. So... Up to you how you want to try it. So can you try multiple things. Can you actually cut so the wire with this? Like um, I'll push down all the way? I don't think so. So this is 24 gauge uh -huh. wire, and that's as small as it goes. Well, so you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't be cutting through it. Yeah. There's the macro right there. <laughs> If you're okay with it, I'm going to take your controller and flash it. Sure. Yeah. So that way... No, no. I just don't want anybody to to get left behind or not have a using a usable controller. Flash yours. Alright. Again, thanks a lot. Yeah. Up, down, left, right. Media keys. Yep. It works. I works, did. Marv. Something there you go. Best. That's why we're here. Is we learn. <laughs> Next time you'll make it pretty. Well, I'm gonna make another one of these tomorrow. Oh yeah. And with your Omron switches. Like, huh? Omron switches. They're not working. No? Uh, so there are three poles, uh -huh. and I don't understand why, because the two outside poles are combined. Uh, but I don't get uh, continuity when I depress the key outside of the keyboard. It's really weird. That is I really have to weird. Show you the switch. It's wild. Yeah. That is really freaking weird. How would that work? JFM. <laughs> Chewing it up. Rotate it around. Um, here's what I do. So, 
I will take it and I cut horizontally alongside of it. Oh, okay. It's a technique I developed a very difficult time with. But even just what you had done was enough because then the heat would just, you know, oh. melt the, the sides of it. Okay. But um, there's there's one. And then in your next one is is right here? Yeah, I just kind of marked. Okay. So from there, take that. Just cut along the side of it. It just comes right off. So once this is flashed, uh, it acts as just a, a keyboard input device and the keys are... Yeah, it's an HID device. Mm -hmm. HID device. And yep. then the keys are just set to be... Uh, Currently, they're set to be. Something. Yeah, so it's. You want to test it? Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Sure. Oh, so okay. the layout is arrow keys. So up, down, left, right. Um, volume up or er, volume down, volume up. Previous track, play, pause, next track. Oh. So it's a it's a little useful thing. You can also take the firmware, modify it, and and reflash it. Um, that's a. It's not as beginner friendly as I would like it to be, but it is what it is, right? It's just it's C code and it's not that, um, bad. It's not that bad, but it's it's also it's not. not Marv will tell you that it's it. it should be easy, <laughs> but but you know if if it's not, it's like well, what the hell do I even do? Where do I even look easy, for so help? Is it? And when it isn't, it's really not. Yeah, yeah, that's a great way of putting it. When it works, it works great and it's super cool. But when it doesn't work. You just want to murder puppies. <laughs> the moment you have to debug, you're upset. This is not the jankiest keyboard project I've done today. Up, down, left, right. Media. You're good. I'm good? Yeah. Wow, first try. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Nobody, nobody has installed the diodes backwards, which I find a success because I can't tell you the number of times I've done that. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're like, why isn't this whole call um, working? Oh, <laughs> nothing quite like that. Oh, it's almost as if I. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, one of my first hand wire, well, my first hand wire was this keyboard that laser cut like wood case. It was nice. Um, I put it all together. I was super proud of it. Plug it in and like it's like all borked and shit and it was just like spamming keys and I'm like what the heck? Like why is it doing this? And it ended up being because the wires that I was using, the insulation melted. And so the wires were crossing at, at various connections and so they were just like it was constantly pressing keys. I had to find those uh, unattach them, and it was just a huge pain in the ass. That sounds really awful. <laughs> yeah. No. What's awful is desoldering an entire board with your switches. Oh, that sounds much worse. <laughs> By hand. By hand. <laughs> By hand. <laughs> when all you have is a, a solder sucker and an iron, not using a, a pump. If you're using a pump, oh my god, it's so nice. Well, thanks. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Hey, oh, I should. Marvin, Carlos, thank you guys. Ah, great. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Really, and uh, again, feel free. Grab keycaps. So yeah, grab a picture of that. One restriction is I get the funky ones and I don't want the ones that are yeah. 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 Yeah.
that just you know there is no there isn't a mechanical movement it's just a you know a squishy rubber thing coming down and um, I think it's like a silicon pad that's just making continuity happen on the PCB yeah but I didn't know what the Well, I didn't realize that you guys were like, I thought you just bought a kit that you had and then brought them in here. No. From the bottom up, yeah. Hand wired. Damn. From the TV over there. Yeah, I don't read things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't flash it. Uh, no, you'll need to bring it up and I'll flash it for you. But when you when I flash it, I'll help you and we'll test it. If everything's good to go, then those are. I need to turn mine off. Can you do like um, man in the middle with one of these for like plug keyboard in one end, plug the other end to your? Um, I don't think so. No, it'd have to be like a USB hub device as well and. QMK doesn't support it. I'm sure you could write like the Arduino code because like, you could also yeah, just import the Arduino code HID library and write them uh, manually. Yeah, um, just QMK has a lot of convenience features over just like a keyboard. You can add a little speaker to it, which is one of the next steps. Okay, cool. Hey, John. It was a good print. Yeah, I was really impressed too. I was like, this is a good print. Yeah, I just curious. Did these just snap fit from the back? Yeah, they just snap fit. So, so this part right here. I should have brought, I didn't. I should have brought.